and get started with our critical mass quick fire sessions. So these are new this year. They're gonna be about six to eight minute talks from three different people. Um, today we're going to start with, well actually I'll give you a summary of critical mass first. So these, these speakers were brought in because they started out at a small company that has now really um, grown into a well-respected company in the industry and we wanna kinda hear more about how they got to where they are and became industry leaders. So our first speaker today will be Jason Dunn, who is a co-founder of Made in Space and serves as the Chief Technology Officer overseeing the development of Made in Space's technology roadmap. Please welcome Jason Dunn for me. Hi, everybody. Um, so I thought I'd, I, I wanted to start with a, a, a story that I know a lot of people don't, don't know, and, and maybe some of you do. Um, it's not quite about made in space. Um, it's a story of uh, the spice trade. And I, for me, I, this is like really fascinating. So um, when I first learned this, I, I never really knew what the spice trade, um, like what that was about. Why were spices being traded? And so I started reading about it. And um, some of you may know this, but the spice trade was actually part of the food preservation industry. So at the time, the technology for preserving food was spices. And it wasn't like spices made food last longer, it just made rotten food taste better. Um, but nonetheless, that was like the best technology that, that was around. Um, until one day, uh, a gentleman named Frederick Tudor came along, and this is in like the, the early 1800s, and uh, he realizes that, um, that he could harvest ice that was growing, uh, you know, freezing on lakes in, in Massachusetts in the winter time build these uh, insulated ice houses, store a whole bunch of ice, and then sell it through the summer months as a way to preserve food. And uh, Frederick Tudor became known as the Ice King, and he quite literally disrupted the entire spice trade. Uh, overnight, that industry completely changed. The food preservation industry went from spices to ice, and the people who were working uh, doing spice trade obviously weren't the ones who then went on to do um, ice harvesting. And uh, the reason I, I tell this story is because it's a story about disruption. And to me, it's like really one of the best examples of what disruption is. It's how an industry is completely changed by a new um, type of technology. And, um, and that's really kind of like the story of, of what Made in Space is and why we've been doing what we've been doing, which is space manufacturing. So I'm not here to say that I think rockets are a bad idea and that they should go away. I think rockets will always be a part of the equation of getting things into space, especially when it comes to humans. Um, but uh, the, my belief, and I think the company's belief, is that if you fast forward kind of end game scenario, um, there's absolutely no reason that everything in space will be coming from Earth. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense. We would be making the things we need there if we can. So that's what we've been working towards. And um, so I'm really honored to get to be here to talk about how you know we're um, moving from small company towards maybe industry leader, I think maybe the only reason uh, we are is because the industry of space manufacturing didn't really exist until we, we came in, so, um, so we're helping kind of pave the way. Uh, what I'll show you uh, for the next couple minutes before I run off is some of the things that we've been, really been working on since day one of the company, but it's just now getting closer towards reality. Um, the first is uh, what happens if you're, if you don't have to uh, launch uh, your space asset in a rocket and instead manufacture it there. And um, to us, one of the, the biggest ideas there is the ability to build things um, in space that wouldn't survive launch. They'd be way too big to fit into a rocket, maybe way too fragile to um, uh, survive the launch environment. So this is a program we're doing with NASA called Arconaut. Arconaut is a spacecraft uh, that you see here um, that's basically a robot. It goes into space and it starts building things uh, rather than launching the pre-built components. We'll call it an antenna or the back plane of a new space telescope. So in this video, it's building you know, kind of a very generic truss. Um, and what's neat about Arconaut is it uses a type of 3D printing technology that we invented that um, it builds extended structures, as, as we call them. These are things that there, there's no build envelope like a normal 3D printer has. Um, it just keeps extruding very large structures. As much material as you can give it, the bigger the structure gets. Um, so that's kind of one essence of what, what Arconaut does. Um, 
But it's more than just um, building trusses, right? If you have the ability to manufacture in space and assemble in space, you can do a lot of other things. Um, so another instance of Arcanaut is this video of, um, it's essentially like a communication satellite that instead of launching with its prefabricated antenna that has to deploy open, uh, it manufactures the antenna in space. So it, it launches still with some prefabricated components, um, but then it's assembled on orbit. So we get better packing efficiencies by, by launching kind of like packaged elements and then doing the assembly. Um, so this concept, it's like a, um, it's a, it's a small uh, platform satellite, maybe a uh, little over a meter in size. I think it's modeled off of like the NASA common spacecraft bus and the antenna, uh, the aperture is uh, around 15 meters or so um, notionally. So it's just showing you can get really big apertures uh, off of a, a really small bus. Um, uh, so this is, uh, this is Arcanaut. It's actually, it's in development with NASA, as I said, and um, it's more than just really pretty videos. We're in, you know, doing TVAC testing on the technology, proving out that you can do this, and we'll start flying uh, technology demonstrators really soon. Um, so we think this is like one key aspect of, you know, fast forward into the future, you should be building things in space rather than packing them up and deploying them open in a rocket. And then, um, but I'll, I'll close on, on this other piece of the company, which is uh, this idea that, um, it's not me, is it? Um, uh, it it's, a, it's a project to make uh, optical fiber in space. And uh, the idea here is, uh, it's a big question we've had since we really started the company, which is, um, are there things that, that uh, there's a market for on Earth uh, that can only be made in space? Because if there are, if there's, if there's products that you can make off of Earth and bring back, then the, the entire industry gets bigger, right? It goes from an industry of sending ones and zeros up and down to an industry of also sending atoms up and down. Or maybe getting the atoms in space, you know, one day from, from space resources, but, um, but bringing things back to Earth that have value. And, um, and we think that this is how the industry actually grows from, you know, the 350 billion or so it, it is a year to something much bigger. Um, we're working this project now, and you can read about it on our website, but the interesting thing is that you, there's a way to, we think, to make optical fiber that is um, orders of magnitude better than silica fiber if you essentially turn gravity off of the manufacturing equation. Um, so we'll try to prove this out uh, this year, but the, the reason it's so important is if it works and if we're able to show that there are products that can be produced only in space and can be sold on Earth, then Hopefully it just opens the mind, uh, you know, the rest of the industry that if that can be done, what else can you make in space and bring back to Earth? And so my prediction that I'll leave you with, and I've told others, is um, I really think that once, once like some watershed moments like this happen and, and we start to see that there are actually things that can be produced only in space and sold on Earth, um, what we'll start to see is a demand for uh, down mass. And today, you know, rockets are all about up mass, but, um, you know, I predict that in the future we'll actually see, um, at some point in time, there'll be a tipping point where more things are coming down to Earth than we are sending from Earth into space. And, um, and I think what it, it takes is showing that there's actually um, products that you can make there and bring back. So um, with that, I'll, I'll probably close and, and just hopefully that gives you a good overview of where we're headed. So thank you. Thanks.